Reggie, can you, and then James, if you have any, you know, thoughts, of course, always welcome that. But Reggie, could you give me a, a detailed breakdown of the events that happened and then the actual event that occurred when DJ Quick showed up to the office and brought a bunch of people with him? Can you give me like a, a full detailed breakdown on that situation, if you don't mind? Yeah. Oh, man, you got me tapping that DJ quick again, huh? Don't do it. <laughs> Say, shut up and go to the next question. Huh? No, no, I can't no, do no, that. No. I ain't going to tap at him. I'll tell the truth. Call the ball, ball, strike a strike, right? Okay, so let me say this. All right. Whatever happened, DJ quick going to bring niggas to death row so he makes sure it ain't a mugging. Niggas ain't getting their ass whooped up in there because you know if you come to death row by yourself, you ain't walking out of there. Something gonna happen. So, come on, man, it's only right. Let if me tell, I had an let issue. Let me tell what happened. And then okay, you know, yeah. Do it. Come on, man. What happened was, uh, it's crazy. Sure, I had a house that was getting ready in Porter Ranch where DJ Quick was living at the time. And uh, so we went to his house like two or three in the morning. Sure, just wanted to talk to him. Unfortunately, I mean, I get it. Going to people's houses two, three in the morning, that ain't cool. That ain't cool at all. Especially with our caller and giving the heads up. But we showed up at this man's house at two or three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize for that, DJ Quick. We out of line. Me being an older man now, totally get it. However, Sugar was smart enough to know to send Reggie at the door. Uh, with Trayvon, Sugar, it was Sugar, Buntry, me, it was about five or six of us. We go to the, to the house, knock on the door, quick, we tell him, hey, Sugar, one holler at you. He, you know, like, what's up? We come out there and speak and talk to Sugar. Him and Sugar talk. Sugar felt that he owed him some money. Uh, we had did some things for quick. I had, did some paperwork for him to get him $700,000 for mixing down uh, uh, the Tupac album. So the estate had just gave him some money while Stu was in jail. Of course, we shot the music video, Black Pussy, for him uh, as a favor, just because Stu knew that was some song he always wanted to do. Stu think he's doing bad. You know, but Quick looked at it and said, hey, that's Stu looking out, you know. You know, he did a song for me uh, through Ronald, through Ronald Knight, your cousin, who was real tight with Tony Lane at the time. They were good friends. And who she, um, who Quick was assigned to for Top Dog. He didn't want to work with the Rillas. He told me right there, nigga, rap too slow. I ain't fucking with the Rillas. But he, he, he did a song for Top Dog for me on Two Gangsta for Radio or Chronic 2000. So Quick figured like, hey, I'm looking out, y'all looking out. But we elect to go to Quick's house that early in the morning. And like I said, we were wrong. So they talked. Quick told him he didn't have that much money, but I know lately, the next day, uh, or a couple of days later after the incident happened, Quick did take Sugar back with about $20,000 in cash and gave it to him at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Nobody knows about that. That was supposed to be a secret between Quick and Chug. But that's why Quick get mad at me about running my mom. But anyway, uh, then we go that night or the, the same night or the next day or the night before, Chug cousin or his, 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 his female cousin, Sandy got, got a son. And Suge just trying to, you know, be cool. And he brings his nephew, Thomas, was uh, graduating from high school or something like that. And he brought Left Eye and, and they were having a party at the house. And Ray J to the party and, and came to the party. And so, of course, we came there to Ronald and Donald Paris' house, who's in Compton, where we all know, on K Street. And, but... Thomas, who's no longer with us, he's from Hoover, who's, you know, the daddy. He was there drinking a little bit, 
you know, we bringing all these blood dudes to his mother's house and, and father's law's house and to his son's party. He was there tripping for some reason. I would have been glad she was bringing to my son's birthday party or, or a graduation party or whatever event it was. You know, some stars. Left Eye and Ray J. Man. To the house, but he tripping where to the point where we had gunplay there between Bob Gotti and Thomas and Lip Dog. And uh, where well, I had to get in the middle. Well, no niggas probably could have shot me. You know, well, I'm over there grabbing on Thomas, like, hey, hey, I'm protecting Thomas. You know, because he got a little 25 and he fool killers pointing 40s and 9 millimeters at his ass. So they go down there. So now Ronald and Donald, the brothers, the twins, I tell you, him and Sugar and them got a crazy, crazy ass relationship. They can fight and talk shit to each other, but you can't fight and fuck with them. But he was cool with Tony Lane at the time. And Quick was managing, so they hear about this. So Ronald called me, and we had been in the studio. He called me about 10 or 11 o'clock. Where you motherfuckers at? Because Ronald, he crazy. Because <laughs> Ronald gangster too, you know. And, you know, in his own way, not a game member, but, you know, had this G status. And he was like, Reggie, where the fuck y'all are? Y'all bringing these niggas to your mama? I said, to your mama, huh? I said, which one of those niggas other than Left Eye and Ray J didn't know where your mama lived? We all know where. We all grew up together. What are you mad? I said, but that was your brother in law that was tripping and acting a fool up there. No, no, no. We need to talk. We're going to. And so I go, okay, Ronald, all right, but I th- let me call Suge and see what's up. Hey, Suge, your cousins and them tripping about whatever. Yeah, all right. Well, we ain't gonna be back up at the office until about five or six that night. All right. So I said, Ronald, man, we're gonna be at the office about five o'clock. Y'all can come up there tonight about five. All right, we'll be there. <laughs> Ronald come with a bunch of dudes from Hoover and and <laughs> High C and Quick and I I just say a bunch of guys from from Fruit Town or Treetop area. And so it's about 10 or 15 of them out there. And we're all at the office, but you know, well, I forgot they were coming. And so now my security said, man, it's about 10 or 15 game members at the gate. Tell them I think they're up here to see y'all. And so I said, well, don't let them in. <laughs> don't let those niggas, don't let them in. This, we'll be down there. So I'm going to tell Shield okay, shit, man, Ronald right down, down there with a bunch of dudes. They, they down there tripping. What's, you're like, all right. You know, not thinking nothing about it. She was like, nah, she's like, all right. You know, because they're cousins. You got to remember. No, they, and they know deep down ain't shit going to happen to each other. Anyway, Ronald and Donald. Uh, so we get about, it's about five of us. Not me, Shug, Buntry, Trey. I don't even think Nick was there. Bob got it. The Bob got his main one. And one of my dudes, security dudes, Marcus, Marquez, Marquez. So we all six go down there, and these niggas at the gate talking shit. You know? And so she was like, what the fuck? Was, you know, you bringing these niggas to my house? And I'm like, Ronald, no, Ronald, you, you, y'all tripping. You know, uh, your, your brother in law, Thomas, was the one tripping. He was the one tripping. And, you know, but nobody wanted to listen to Reggie. And so they going back and forth. And so she was saying all of these fruit town, tree top dudes over there. And he's like, what's going on? You know what? We, y'all with these crib dudes? You know, but Hoover, y'all got to understand, Hoover don't really, they go blood and crips. They, they kind of neutral. They gangsters. But they over there, and they over there with the one of them got a little short dude got this like an assault weapon with this with the gun behind him. I'm like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. I mean, shit, these niggas up here serious. <laughs> so the confrontation went back and forth. Well, now they want to fight Gotti because Gotti was the one that my boy bought Gotti that pointed the gun at Thomas. Some words behind that. And, you know, Donald Donald Knight was the peacemaker that night, to be honest. Not Reggie, Donald. That jumped over the fence. I told him to come over there and got everything calmed down, you know, and to the point where that's what happened. Uh, that WAC 100 version is out there. I don't know where he get that version from. He wasn't there. Um, 
That's my boy. He just probably heard about it. But that's all that happened. It got worked out that day. And so why are they doing this over the gate? Why they why why y'all didn't open the gate? Oh, the well, that's Reggie, right? I ain't letting 15, 16, it was only five of us. There were 15 or 16 dudes in the gate with all those. They got guns and assault weapons and all that. They ain't had no business going Bob on. Bob got him a strap. Bob got him a strap. Oh, sure. Bob told him. Bob told him. Because that's what Ronald wanted to fight. You know, he wanted to. And Bob, he's like, I ain't doing no fighting. I ain't. You know, got it. You know, got it. And so Gotti was like, uh, and so for some reason they had an issue with Gotti that day for some reason. And they wanted to fight Gotti, but Gotti wasn't, Gotti wasn't having that. And, uh, but that's the incident that happened. That's, that's all that happened. Anything else more is this little extra cap. So, I mean, it's a little bit more details that went on. I'll probably explain more, but that's all that happened on that situation. Um, they left. Quick and Shug met up later. Uh, Quick passed some money to Shug. Shug got off of him. And I didn't hear of any more incidents until Quick called him out again at um, at that convention where he made some statements there. And I think he called Shug the devil or something like that. Or uh, maybe that was Jewel. I forget which one of them. But they both made some statements. And then... Uh, uh, something else. Somebody always, somebody else always had an issue. Um, but anyway, so that's that's the basis of what happened on that incident with Quick and uh, and that's why I feel as though Quick made that statement about Trayvon is because he was always mad that Trayvon was the one that showed up and came to his house that late at night with me. He had he had to, always had to exclude me from the BS. Oh, y'all was in violation. Yeah, I agree. I, and I apologize. Going to his house at three in the morning. I apologize. Now yeah. let me say this. Okay. Now if Quick would have started shooting, yeah, and one of the homies would have got killed. Oh, he finally moved. All kind of hell would have broke loose behind it. But then if it would have happened to that one of one of that bro homies did something to Quick, all hell would have broke loose from yeah. The trees and fruits over some 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 stupid shit going to a motherfucking man house at three o'clock in the morning. Correct. Straight violation. That those are bully tactics, nigga. We can show up. Yeah, I agree. We were wrong. Yeah, you know, I get it. I, I understand. Quick. I invite right. everybody to my house. Motherfuckers say I need to get a dog for what? I invite you. Come to that motherfucker. And if you tell me you're coming, I'm gonna leave the front door open. Come on in this motherfucker. It's very few people in my life that can just knock on my door to show up unannounced. That part. So why would you go to his house? I said, I admit it, we were wrong. Okay. okay. We were wrong. I apologize to the man being an older man. Man, a lot of us don't accept consequences. I, I admit that we were wrong. Okay. We were wrong. Now you heard him quick. This is the first time this motherfucker admitted that he was wrong ever. Oh, yeah. That I've heard. He's saying he's wrong. And, well, and you apologized too, didn't you? I do now. I never have before. Okay. But I did. I do now. He only did that because I was a big boy about it. Yeah. 